You've probably already seen videos about upgrading through every version of Windows. But usually those videos show upgrading a clean installation. What about upgrading through every version of Windows on the original installation that came with the computer, which usually has some extra programs? This is what I wanted to try out on my ThinkPad T60. I've shown in my other video the restoration process using its recovery CDs. And now that Windows XP is installed and set up, we can try upgrading through every version of Windows all the way up to Windows 10. Since the other video, I've taken a look at the programs that are included in this installation. It comes with Symantec Antivirus, which I decided to try out just for fun, and the free trial actually started. It's a 90-day free trial. However, I couldn't get it to update. The virus definition file was from 2005, and after connecting to the internet, I tried running the live update and it said everything was up to date, even though it clearly wasn't. So I uninstalled it. Then I installed the unofficial Windows XP Service Pack 4. I installed the latest Internet Explorer cumulative security update that allowed me to get all other updates and then this Windows XP installation was fully up to date with all the security updates until April 2019 which is when the POS ready version of Windows XP ended support. I installed some extra programs, but not much. I installed OpenOffice, which I normally wouldn't use. I either use Microsoft Office or LibreOffice, but, but in this case, I did OpenOffice for a change. I typed up a quick test document and saved it to the My Documents folder. I also installed the Bitdefender free antivirus, which is no longer available, but I still had the installer and it works. It's my favorite lightweight antivirus for Windows XP and Windows Vista. It doesn't have many settings, but it works really well and doesn't slow down the computer. I also set a charge threshold to extend the battery life a little bit. I set it to stop charging after 75% and start charging when it's below 60%. This way I can leave the computer plugged in all the time and it's not always at 100%, which extends the battery life a little bit. By that I mean that the battery capacity doesn't deteriorate as fast. I also did this on my newer ThinkPad T440S. I installed the latest XP compatible version of Lenovo system update, but it seems that it no longer works because I tried it last year and it worked, but now it says there are no updates for the system even though there clearly should be. I installed some driver updates that Windows Update found, and I also found this custom theme called Think Theme, which has a rather messy looking background, but I set it up just to see if it sticks through. And now I was ready to upgrade to Windows Vista. I had a disk with Windows Vista Service Pack too, so I just inserted it in the, the computer. First I decided to try check compatibility online. It opened the web browser, but made me download this really weird zip file. I have no idea what it's about. Well, I think it means ACPI tables, but what am I supposed to do with it? I think th they changed the link, which is weird. They usually don't do that. But I tried again, and still it gave me this weird zip file that I couldn't do anything with. So this go.microsoft.com link was no longer usable. But anyway, I had the disk, so it didn't matter. I just selected install now, installed the, the updates. I skipped the product key because we're not gonna stay in this version of Windows and then start the upgrade. It found some issues, but they were not important. Microsoft Interactive Training is a really interesting application. I should show it in another video, but it's about teaching you how to use Windows XP. And of course, it's not going to work the same in newer versions, but it doesn't matter. We can still start the upgrade. So now it's going. Uh-oh, Windows could not prepare the computer to boot into the next phase of the installation. I didn't know what to do there. So I restarted the computer and tried again, and again, 
and again. And it still failed. I played a hand of solitaire in the dark with the thick light. Then I decided to try again off camera. And look, it's restarting. So recording this kind of stuff always jinxes it. Anyway, I didn't just try again. I, I uninstalled a program that came with the computer called Client Security Solution. It has various security stuff, but I didn't need it. I didn't need to protect this computer because there wasn't anything important on it. Even uninstalling it was a bit hard because it said some Windows installer files could not be found. But I downloaded the Windows installer cleanup program and then I was able to reinstall client security solution. And finally, I was able to properly uninstall it. And after uninstalling that, the upgrade worked. I also uninstalled the Bitdefender antivirus because I wasn't sure if maybe that one was causing the problem. Anyway, the upgrade is finally done. It's quite slow, of course, but it works. It even has arrow. And we have some compatibility issue with this Sonic thing. Not sure what that is. The Windows Experience Index is 3.2. It couldn't find a solution for this compatibility problem. And this damn thing doesn't go away, but whatever. I added these gadgets with a program called Rain Meter, but I didn't need them anymore on Windows Vista because it comes with the Windows sidebar, so I had to remove the Rain Meter gadgets from the startup, and then I could re-enable the Windows sidebar. Let's try opening up Firefox, which is the latest version that can run on Windows XP or Vista, Firefox 52.9 ESR. I also installed the New Moon web browser, which is an updated version of Pale Moon. It worked very well on Windows XP, and in Windows Vista it has a different look. I re-enabled the menu bar, and the program still seems to work fine. It says it's designed only for Windows XP, but it works. Pressing the Think Manage button pops up another compatibility problem, and checking for solutions online doesn't help, but if you click Run Program, the program still works. I decided to try the system update again, but it still didn't work because it's a server-sided problem. I checked if my document was still there, and it was. And another problem that I found is that I can't open the My Music folder anymore. It has some permission problems. Even if I click Continue and it asks for administrative privileges, I cannot open that folder anymore. But anyway, now it's time to upgrade to Windows 7. I tried checking compatibility online again, and this time it loaded a proper page about Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor. It looks a bit messed up because I have no script installed, so I allowed the Microsoft website to run scripts. Surface Pro 6, we're not interested in that, you can't do an upgrade journey on that computer, because it can only run Windows 10. So let's start the installation of Windows 7. I tried checking for updates again, but this time it got stuck. Maybe I should have waited a little longer, but I didn't have enough patience, so I cancelled it. And the installer froze, so I quit it from Task Manager and restarted it without checking for updates. Now it's checking compatibility, and there's a problem. This program called DiskKeeper2007 is not compatible with Windows 7. Actually, it wasn't even compatible with Vista, because I tried running it, and it said it cannot be run via Terminal Services, which is another name for the Microsoft Remote Desktop. It's just a disk defragmenter, but it uses wording that could scare some people, like, your computer is not performing as well as it should be, and only 99% of the files in your computer are performing optimally. By that, it means that only 99% of the computer is defragmented, as if that was a problem. So I just uninstalled Disk Keeper, and the upgrade started.
was done, it asked for a product key after the upgrade, but we can skip this. In this case, I clicked on Ask Me Later for updates because I'm gonna install some updates manually in a moment. And there's already a problem. The screen resolution is not correct. It's at 800 by 600 because some drivers are gone. But before installing the missing drivers, I checked if my document was still there. Still has some compatibility issue, but the program still runs. The Sonic program seems to be gone because it doesn't warn about that anymore. On Windows Update, I installed all the drivers that were deleted during the upgrade. So it installed some compatible drivers. Now we have the right screen resolution. I wanted to enable Arrow, but I wanted to keep this thing theme. And for some reason I cannot enable Arrow while, while this theme is set. So whatever. I also saw this thing screensaver, but it said the specified module could not be found and left uh, an icon on the taskbar. It had the same problem on Windows XP. So I guess we can't see what that screensaver looks like. But now let's open Firefox and look, there's an update. Because you can install the newest version of Firefox on Windows 7. And there it is, Firefox Quantum ESR, which is the same web browser I use on my main computer. Works great. So I set the dark mode and small icons, which is what I prefer. Bitdefender Antivirus also works, and so does the new Moon web browser, even though we no longer need it. But I'll keep it there just to see if it still works on newer versions of Windows. If you don't like Firefox, you can try another web browser called Pale Moon. That's the web browser New Moon is based off, and Pale Moon is based on Firefox. If you did notice, I only had an installed disk for the original Windows 7 without Service Pack 1 and I wasn't sure but I thought that you probably need the Service Pack 1 before upgrading to the next version which is Windows 8. So even though I didn't set up the automatic updates, I downloaded the Service Pack 1 installer manually and installed it which took quite a long time but eventually it worked with no problems. And here's something cool that isn't specific to Windows 7, but if you have a mechanical hard drive, there is the active protection system on this ThinkPad. And it's basically an accelerometer. If you tilt the computer, it, it can detect that and stop the hard drive temporarily. So if you drop it, there's a lower chance of the hard drive being damaged. Of course, mechanical hard drives are fragile and, and it's unlikely that a running hard drive will survive a drop even a small one, but it does the best it can. Next thing I tried was Windows 8. Now, when I say Windows 8, I think about both the original Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. It's basically like the difference between Windows 7 original and Windows 7 Service Pack 1. It forced me to enter a product key, so I entered a generic product key that I found online. This will not let you activate Windows, but it will let you install it. But I ran into this problem. When it asks what to keep, it didn't have an option to keep the applications, and even though keeping personal files is better than nothing, I would like to keep the applications, otherwise it's almost like a clean installation. So I looked at the help guide, and it says that if you're upgrading from Windows 7 to 8.1, you cannot upgrade keeping the applications. I dug through my old backups and I found an ISO file for the original Windows 8, and thankfully it was 32-bit. So. I tried that, and this one looks very similar to the Windows Vista and 7 installers that we've seen before. It still has to check compatibility. It showed this error for an Internet Explorer add-on, but it just said the browser was out of date, and at the top it said that it was running with add-ons disabled. So I didn't care and just closed it and resumed the upgrade because everything else was fine.
it's time to enter the product key or you can skip it, it's up to you. Let's go through a few basics and here you have to select a color. Too bad there's no black with red accent, that will be the best option on a ThinkPad. And there's wireless. I had my wireless network set up, but I, I, it seems like I have to set it up again. Never use express settings, because Windows 8 has the same amount of telemetry that Windows 10 has. Not many people know about that. And now it teaches you the new way to use Windows. I can't believe they thought this was a good idea for people using computers without a touch screen. And there we go, there's the Windows 8 start screen. Let's immediately go to the desktop and look at that. Now the taskbar is gray. Almost looks like the classic theme in Windows XP or older versions of Windows. But the upgrade worked. Test document is still there. My programs are still there. Firefox should work just fine, and so does New Moon. It looks kind of cool here because the gray theme with the title bar text on the center almost looks like a Mac. Think Manage stuff still works. And it still has the video driver even. So I've just unplugged the computer from the power and as you can see the heads up display is working too for the brightness and volume. Now in my other video about Windows 10 on this computer we've seen that it crashes on battery power when the video drivers are installed. But even though it takes like 5 minutes to boot up because I have a slow hard drive it actually still works which is quite surprising. Maybe it's something to do with 32-bit. I have no idea. And for some reason, now the taskbar is black instead of gray. Now, again, I think Windows 8 and 8.1 are the same thing, but I still thought that maybe you need Windows 8.1 before upgrading to Windows 10, so... I changed it back to gray as I was getting ready to upgrade to Windows 8.1. And while Windows 8.1 was installing, something popped up which scared me at first. I saw it from the corner of my eye while I was in the other side of the room, and I thought it was just a background because it was about to reboot. But then I noticed and it didn't say think, it said something else. And then I looked at it and the stuff on the screen was moving. Here's how it looks like in real time. This is the Think screensaver, which apparently requires Adobe Flash. That's why it didn't work before. But Windows 8 comes with Adobe Flash. That's why it suddenly works now. And it says think in different languages. Although I think wichtig, sorry if my pronunciation isn't very good, means important in German, not think, well, whatever. Now my wireless network is saved, I don't have to type the password again. Again, no express settings and it has even more telemetry settings than the original Windows 8.
And there you go. And it opened up Bitdefender antivirus automatically. So I already know that's working. It keeps popping up with this Flux limited colors, but it works. That's a program I've installed to make the screen more yellow in the evening and at night, but it also makes it easier on the eyes. So again, everything seems to be working fine, including Firefox, Think Manage stuff with the compatibility warning. And there's the screensaver, which I haven't seen before. Created for Lenovo Corporation by Westport Multimedia. It's kind of cool. Those messy lines look better on a moving screensaver as opposed to the background. But anyway, now time for Windows 10. And this time I did not use the original version of Windows 10. I used the latest one right now, which is May 2019 update. It forced me to enter the product key again. And because I already have a digital entitlement license for this computer, I didn't want to maybe mess it up by entering a generic product key. So I decided to properly activate Windows 8.1 using my genuine product key that I got from Microsoft Imagine. And then the Windows 10 upgrade went fine. send stuff to Microsoft and there you go there's Microsoft Edge and again a bunch of no longer available compatibility warnings but it boots up although the desktop background is gone there's the start menu. It still comes with bullshit like Candy Crush, but it's not as bad as it used to be. And it can be uninstalled very easily and it won't come back. I tried setting the Think wallpaper again. It should be in C Windows Resources Themes. Checked my document again. Of course, it's still there and OpenOffice still works. Firefox works great as ever. I had to set it as the default again, but no big deal. New Moon also works. The heads up display for the brightness and volume also works. So let's take a look at what this installation is like. Adobe Audition is a program I installed myself. I wanted to try recording some audio, but I ended up not doing that. Windows 10 thinks it's a game. It asks to press Windows G, which is a shortcut for the Windows 10 game tools. And Adobe Reader 7, I actually never tried this before because the first time I ran it, it started installing. So let's go through the installation. The DVD player application, Inter Video Win DVD, still works, even though I haven't tried putting a DVD in it. I guess it beats buying Windows DVD player on the Windows Store. Think Manage still works and doesn't complain about compatibility anymore. If we go to Learn My System, there's the Help Center to look at some stuff. It's the manual for the computer. System Information, it just says OS Version Professional, which is kind of funny. The charge threshold still works because I never unplugged it and it's still at 76%. It should be 75, but whatever. Windows is activated with a digital license and it's the latest version, 1903. And all drivers seem to be fine, but it's using the Microsoft Basic Display Adapter, not the ATI drivers. All the Think Manage programs are still there, but I did not check them one by one. Of course, client security solution is not there because I uninstalled it. The Sound Max control panel doesn't seem to open. The Java control panel does work. It's a really old version of Java. PC Doctor said it required administrative privileges, so I ran it as administrator and it says operating system not supported.
I also installed GreenShot, my favorite screenshot tool for Windows, and it still works. I installed it back when it was running XP and still works perfectly in Windows 10. Windows Media Player works, but all the sample music is gone from all the versions of Windows I've been through. Even though I uninstalled Symantec stuff, it still has the live update control panel item, which works, even though there's nothing to update. This is the install shield update manager. Looks interesting, for a few seconds at least. This is the ThinkPad configuration app. Another thing that looks interesting, you can see various information. And here it identifies the OS version as 6.3. And you probably know that modern versions of Windows are based on the NT kernel. Windows XP is Windows NT 5.1, Vista is 6.0, 7 is 6.1, 8 is 6.2 and 8.1 is 6.3 and Windows 10 is supposed to be NT version 10 but here it still says 6.3 so the screen is at its native resolution but it's not using the ATI driver and now that I'm running Windows 10 I can use the Windows Defender which is good enough for me so we can uninstall Bitdefender antivirus and look at all the programs installed there most of them came with the original installation Again, Windows 10 takes about 5 minutes to start up, mostly because of the slow hard drive. It's only 5400 RPM, and it's quite an old computer. But if you install an SSD, it starts up in about 1 minute, which is not the fastest thing ever, but it's really good for a computer from 2006, which uses SATA, but only SATA 1. Oh, and I forgot to try Adobe Reader. But it crashes, so I guess we can't use that. My favorite PDF reader on Windows is Sumatra PDF. I really recommend it if you have Windows. And see these shortcuts for Office applications? They're just links to the online version of Microsoft Office. And it doesn't even explain how the program works, it just asks you to sign in, which is quite user unfriendly. Now that I'm using Windows 10, I decided to install Lenovo Vantage, which is the modern version of the Lenovo system update program. It worked, but it couldn't find any updates, still. I installed the ATI Mobility Radeon X1300 graphics drivers using an update package meant for Windows 7. It worked, and it doesn't even crash, but all the stuff on the screen still lags a lot, so I'm not sure if it's actually working properly. So here we are, upgrading through every version of Windows from Windows XP to Windows 10 on this ThinkPad T60 with its original installation. Was it a waste of time? Yes, but I wanted to try it anyway. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.